FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. We're back, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. This is Kerry Lutz. Well, the silver fix and eventually the gold fix, are they going to go the way of the buggy whip? And right now, forces, unbeknownst to most of us, are working feverishly to come up with substitutes for these, what are really age-old institutions. I mean, the silver fix has been around for 117 years. The gold fix has been around for almost a century And now, mysteriously, they're going to cease to exist very shortly. I mean, the the silver fix, August 14th is D-Day. Don't have D-Day yet for the gold fix, but someone who's been paying a lot of attention to it that you need to listen to, Bix Weir of RoadToRuta.com fame is with us now. Bix, welcome back. Hey, Kerry. How you doing? All right. So amazing thing. Um, They're just trying to put something together, anything together, just to have a silver fix. And what I read in Zero Hedge two days ago, I guess it was, is that CME Group, owner of the Comex, is going to team up with Reuters and have the fix. And it's amazing because the guy who was responsible for dumping half of England's gold holdings to bail out a bunch of banks way back when in the uh, late 90s, I think it was, is the guy who's behind all this. And it doesn't seem by any means to be a done deal, but for something that is archaic and makes absolutely no difference, they seem to be spending a lot of time and energy trying to figure out a replacement. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, it it does when you take your mind out of the physical silver realm uh, and put it into the silver derivative realm, where all these silver derivatives are written on contracts using the London fix as a benchmark number. Um, And that's a lot of contracts. The the physical to paper ratio is like 300 to one right now. So as, as small as people say the silver market is, it's 300 times larger in the silver derivative market, and all those are are run through specific contracts with specific language, and, and a lot of them use that term, the silver fix. So it is, it does have huge implications on the derivative side of silver. So were there to be no silver fix, fix, <laughs> pardon, <laughs> pardon the rhyme, um, if it just ceased to exist, if they couldn't come up with something that was legally um, binding and had legal effect, then the outcome or the legitimacy of all of these derivative contracts and all they are are contracts. You know, you hear about, uh, you know, all of the trading, all the derivatives and everything else. All they are is just a piece of paper effectively that gives them rights to a effectively purchase a quantity of a physical metal at some point in the future or the right to purchase a contract to purchase physical metal in the future, right? That's all an option is, is a right well, to purchase a future, right? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of these contracts don't even, have, yeah, don't even have any in, kind of delivery mechanism. In theory. Be, yeah, in theory. In theory, theory. right? Um, but... But a lot of it is, you know, they're attached to other type of deals and structures, and and it got so convoluted. If you look at the ISDA, which is the uh, the, the association that deals with all derivatives, they have a 500, I think it's 550 page document that they released in 2005 with all the definitions of all the terms used in these derivative contracts, which are which are very long themselves, and under the term silver fix. It means the price setting for a day as calculated by the London silver market, which is capitalized. That's the company that, that produces the fix every day. And displayed on Reuters screen page SIFO that displays the price. So that's why they, they need Reuters in, this, in this, uh, <laughs> this new fix. But the big question is, 
with CME there instead of the London silver market do any of these contracts that have been written over the past you know 20 years that use the term silver fix do any of them will they stand up and say yeah well now it's the CME slash Reuters fix well they didn't say that in the contracts it isn't the legal language and, and my big question is as we get closer and closer to that date and as nothing is really set in stone right now, you know, these bankers are not this careless. They, I believe that they're doing it for a reason. And the reason might be, just might be, that they want to erase all the past silver derivative contracts because of the language used in it and then work on something new for the future where they have the, the CME slash Reuters fix, which takes it out of the hands of the bankers and into a third party. So there's a lot going on right now. There's a lot of room for lawyers to jump in and say, hey, we don't have to stand up to these legal shorts. There's no such thing as a true silver fix as defined by the ISDA. <laughs> so it, it, it's complicated and it's crazy, but so is that market. And, and the best thing you can do is just get physical and hold it and, and write out whatever happens. Yeah, interesting, because what this effectively is, is a retroactive uh, modification of what appear to be Billions, maybe hundreds of billions, maybe even trillions of dollars worth of contracts that are currently in effect. So if there is no fix or if there isn't a fix that meets that definition, then these contracts may in effect be impossible to perform and they might go poof. And, and, and a, lot of, and a lot of people are saying, well, they'd never let that happen. But if they were the ones in trouble. If, if the LBMA, the, the head guys at the LBMA were the ones in trouble with these, you know, silver short derivative contracts, I can see them doing that. I, you know, they've done much worse in yeah. the past. And it's interesting to note that the silver fix is the one being shut down. The London fix is the one being investigated by the investigators in, in, out of London, the, the FSA, one of those different entities. And they had hearings on it, but they, they, they talk very little about the silver fix, which is being shut down. Yeah. And, and they even busted uh, Barclays for rigging the, the London gold fix. So uh -huh. it's, it's very complicated, but there is a plan in place. I wish I knew exactly what the banksters were planning. But one of the things that might be planning is to, is to wash away all these, all these contracts written in silver, which would be extremely... <laughs> chaotic shall we say in the silver market um, oh, you know but it would it might get them out of jail give them their get out of jail free card who knows uh, i just you know i mean this would be this would be the great train robbery of precious metals markets i mean <laughs> another one yeah. another great train robbery uh, i just you know as a lawyer i'm analyzing this and you know it's impossibility right? Effectively, you can't perform a contract if the benchmark measure has changed. And, you know, effectively, you're telling what used to be supposedly a group of dealers, effectively, they made the fix, right? You know, you had um, the Rothschilds at one point, then it went to to Deutsche Bank and Barclays and HSBC and one or two others, right? Scotia, mm -hmm. Scotia yep. Makata. Um, if memory serves me correct, I could be wrong about that. And then you're actually shifting it to the exchange. So there's an argument to be made that effectively you've changed the price discovery mechanism. Therefore the contract really has changed the whole nature of it. And everybody should walk away. The contract should be terminated. And I hadn't thought about that. A little scary to think of that well, just you, these contracts could just go up and smoke. Well, if, if you think about it, I mean, the, the London Bullion Market Association claims to trade over 100 billion ounces of silver uh, every year. Well, I believe it's, it's it. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I believe it. That, <laughs> I know it, it's crazy. You know, obviously they're not real physical ounces. They're, they're paper. You know, this might be the best thing ever for silver holders because it might add so much discredit to the paper silver market 
if they try to wash these contracts away, that the, in the future they won't use any paper silver contracts. The whole, you know, paper silver electronic silver game yeah. may just go away because of this. Now, all we're all we're really asking for physical silver ores is that we want a free market in silver because we know that the price of silver is is compressed using these these tools and instruments. If they go away. That's all we really want. We don't want to blow up the banks. We just want silver to be free to trade. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I just, I don't know. I just can't picture these contracts just going away. But on the other hand, it really does change the nature of these agreements in such a way that you're giving them an out if they want to take it. And if you're on the losing end, if you're on the losing end of this trade, Maybe you do want to take it. And we know who's on the losing end. All those big banksters who've been rigging the silver market. And then what about new contracts that have been made since the announcement of the cessation of the silver fix? You know, you got to yeah, wonder well, about those, right? Well, the, the master document that the ISDA put out, it, it came out in 2005 that defines these terms. Mm-hmm. Now, with... Basically, the the players in the derivative market use these terms in their contract in their own contracts. So these contracts can be extremely, extremely complicated, and it's sure. not just you know I promise to sell you something at this date at this one date. They can be just you know, derivatives upon derivatives upon swaps and yeah, and swaptions is is, is a great swaptions. term that they define. <laughs> Option on a swap. Yeah. So it's about as ugly as you get on the legal side in every single term. Once once the big term, the silver fix goes away, what happens? And we're in we're in never never land here. And people say, well, the fix is antiquated. There's no need for it. And that would be true, but for the realms, the realm of the derivatives. Hey, when we return, let's talk more about this derivative uh, potential blow up. And let's talk about the precious metals raid that took place two days ago on the Financial Survival Network. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Do you have Medicare or health insurance through your employer? If so, listen up. The health care reform wasn't written to save the health care industry or even to lower health care costs. Shoot, it isn't even designed to insure the uninsured. It's just a temporary political byproduct. Like a flat rock you step on in a swiftly moving stream, Obamacare is just a means to an end. Want to learn more about Obama's ultimate objective? Then you'll want to review our latest research presentation found on OCLies.com. In it, a health expert and industry insider explains what you think you know about caring for your health is about to drastically change in 2014. Plus, he details the simple steps you could take to save thousands of dollars per year in health costs. It's free for you to preview at OCLies.com. Don't waste time. What you don't know about the health care reform could hurt you and your family. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. We're back. Kerry Lutz on the Financial Survival Network. So, Bix, uh, yeah, this thing uh, is going to have to play itself out. And, uh, you know, in the courts might well be headed, but the courts are very reactionary and slow to to take note of what's happening in the real world. And it might just give them the opening that they need to, to just chuck all this thing. But it will kill the markets uh, for the... For, for a decade because nobody will trust these things anymore and nobody will trade them because effectively they'll have been exposed for what they are, just a big casino. And speaking of casinos, look at the raid that took place uh, starting a couple of days ago in gold and silver. They were getting too far out of hand. And whenever that happens, what happens, right? They slam it down. I, I heard it was, 40 tons of uh, paper gold were, were, were basically dumped on the market in a matter of a minute, a minute, a full minute, which is a huge amount of gold. And, and it's amazing that, that the, the, the buyers stood up and, and took it <laughs> at any yeah. price. You know, you dump that kind of uh, volume on the, on the market in an instant, 
at a slow time in the market, and usually you know the price crashes through the floor beyond what it what it did. It's just another raid, a paper raid, a computer generated electronic raid. It's, it's very similar to all the other raids, except for one thing, and that is that there is there's word in the conspiracy world that the, the whole rigging of gold and silver may be coming to an end at some point, and you know, they, from the conspiracy side, the the big players have been told to get long positions in gold and silver and, and even the stocks and, and whatever you do come the end of July, you need to be long and ready for the ride up. So this might be, you know, I'm not saying it's the end of manipulation, but this might be one of those final slams before the, the market is allowed to move up again. And- even this kind of slam here, you know, it started Monday down $32.3, yesterday down 13 Today it's up $9, but on the open. But now uh, we're only up like around 5 bucks. They've been chipping away at it, but... Uh, you're, you know. you're, making, you're making that huge mistake of watching the, the market move without thinking behind the scenes. There's a little guy in the basement of the treasury with a computer yeah. who's putting it exactly at that spot at that time. I know. And, I know. and everybody else just looks at it. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's just uh, can't help but watch it because I knew they're not letting it. Uh, they're not letting it go up today uh, over thirteen hundred. I just couldn't see it happen, you know. But silver, nonetheless, it's uh, over twenty bucks for all this uh, raid. I mean, how long is it going to stay over twenty bucks with what's going on? That's what I want to know. You as know. long as they, as long as they, you know, press down that single key on the on keypad, mm-hmm. and you, know, you got to remember, we haven't had a freely traded silver market since the seventies, early seventies when computers yeah. came into this market. So, you know, it's fun to look at. You think, oh, god, the good guys are winning. They must be buying a lot of silver. No, no. You know, there is no physical silver exchange in the world. There is no physical. It's so important to understand the LME trades all kinds of metals. You go in there with money and you walk out with metal. There is no place in the world to go in there with money and walk out with silver. Mm -hmm. Because the LBMA is an association. It's not an exchange. They just report prices in. The big banks report prices in. The, The COMEX is just futures and options. Now you can trade in your futures for for physical, supposedly, and, you know, according to their rules. But there is no just regular silver exchange where you can go in with you know a million dollars and walk out with a million dollars with the physical silver because it's for sale. And that's the really interesting thing. And and it's kind of true for gold too. Although they're starting to you know start up real exchanges in, in Asia, you know the LBMA is not an exchange; it's an association. And the comics is not a physical market. It is a futures and options market. So this is just another thing to, to point out that gold and silver are completely different metals, completely different commodities than any other commodity. Yeah. Hey, and what about in China, all the their private markets? I don't have like a lot of confidence. They had a little <laughs> rehypothecation scandal, you know. It's just amazing. As a lawyer, I've always known what hypothecation means. We didn't really deal with rehypothecation, but uh, the American public and the world public as a whole never knew what hypothecation meant at all. It's been a real wake up call, but you know, 60, 80 tons of uh, rehypothecated gold and all the other stuff that's been rehypothecated in China, nobody knows what they have in China other than what's buried in the backyard there, you know? Yeah, and it's true. And in rehypothecation, all it means is multiple people own the same ab- same assets and they're not telling anybody. Yeah. And that, that's true for silver. That's true for stocks and bonds. And, you know, if you think that, that your brokerage company actually goes out and buys the physical certificate of the stock that you purchase, no, they, they just put, they take your money, they use it for other things and they, they, they put your account, they debit your account, those shares, and it gets everybody, you know, feeling good because they get a piece of paper at the end of the month saying, hey, I own this. But, you know, that brokerage company never went out and bought it in your name. Except- so they've done it a thousand times over and over again. And with the moment, the moment that music stops is the moment everybody's going to be saying, 
well, what do I have that's real? And <laughs> how many people own that same stock as I do or the, the same uh, unallocated piece of silver that I thought I owned? Well, I think uh, for Wall Street uh, Masters of the Universe, they train them. Uh, they have to go see that movie, The Producers, before they can go start working, you know? That's true. <laughs> as long as you see the producers, then you understand how the system works. Okay, you get your uh, you get your diploma, and you're ready to go to work on Wall Street, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it, 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 Wall Street just sucks you in and says, "Hey, here's how much money you can make, and here's how we do things on the side, and make sure you don't get caught. And if you do get caught, you know you're a one off rogue guy, and and you know we had nothing to do with it, but you know we'll we'll make sure your family's taken care of after you get out of jail. Yeah. It's just ridiculous, the whole thing. Yeah, you're a lone gunman. Yeah, no conspiracy. <laughs> How many lone gunmen? Uh, anything big is always, oh, my God, we have this rogue trader who, who lost us $20 billion. It's, yeah. it's, it's criminal what they're doing. Yeah, well, you know, that's, uh, that's the world in which we live right now. But, uh, hey, um, you know, what do you do uh, at this point, Bix? Because it does seem like the system is becoming more and more unstable, doesn't it? It, it is, and you know, I I see the chaos starting in, you know, kind of for silver, definitely somewhere around the London fix. They'll probably get a couple of weeks of uh, the world accepting that, uh, hey, we fixed the problem. But then it starts to shake when one of the derivative, large derivative holders, who's losing money, says, you know, there is no London fix. I'm not paying up on this contract. And then who knows what's going on with the, the European banks right now. It's really interesting. There's this word coming out that pure fraud is going on at, at some of these banks and their large derivative holders. So the, the European derivative market is kind of where my eyes are right now and keep an eye on that. And, and if you really want to go to the conspiracy side, you can look at uh, was it Christine Lagarde talking about uh, – the, the power of the magic seven and all, you know, does that mean July? And everybody's all freaked out about that, that, that uh, Lagarde wants the, the system to collapse in July. And, you know, if you're sitting with physical metal in your own possession, very little in the banking system, very little in, you know, your 401k and savings accounts, you're doing just fine and, and you can write out anything. If you're not, you got to get that physical in your own possession. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you're right. Uh, there's, there's a limit to uh, how long this thing's going to go on. I mean, you've seen instability, a couple of uh, European banks uh, kind of die anonymously or under the radar. And then afterwards, Oh, everything's good. Don't worry about it. Uh, Espirito Santo is just fine. You know, it's contained, there's, right? There's a lot of a lot of sweeping stuff under the rug, but at some point, you can't. You're gonna run into a situation like we ran into on September 15th, on 2000, what was it, 2008, mm -hmm. and kind of everything stopped, crashed, and and banks couldn't borrow from each other. We're gonna have another one of those moments. You know, is it September 15th this year? Uh, it might be. Might be before that. I think. Um, but you know, we'll see. And, and one thing we're assured of the bad guys will continue to try to keep the system going. You know, the good guys and, and you and me will keep fighting for free markets and justice and liberty and things like that. And I think in the end we'll win, but it's not going to be easy getting there and hasn't been easy all these years. It will continue to be difficult, but as long as I, I love to say, I would rather be years early then one second too late when preparing for this. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the only time uh, you care about having a gun, Bix, uh, the only time it matters is when you need one and don't have it, right? It's, it's true, it's true. And I, I love that my guns are all locked up and, and I, I don't have to touch them, but I know they're there and I know the moment that I'll, I'll be very happy that, that I actually went, took the time and, and bought a gun and, and basically got ready for this transition. I, I don't think it will be as bad as needing guns, and I hope it's not, but the potential is there, and, and as long as the potential is there, I think everybody should prepare for, for a little bit of chaos for a while. Yeah, well, 
you know, the system needs to be purged. It's been put off for too long, but eventually it will have to be purged. So Bix, just tell us where we find your work and how we subscribe. Uh, RoadToRuta.com. Uh, there's a free site and a lot of information there. There's a email update site, which is free as well. And then there's a paid site with it gets a little deeper into the uh, conspiracy side of the world. <laughs> well, we know there's enough conspiracies going, going on right now to fill a thousand uh, John Grisham books. That's for sure. <laughs> and look for the link on financial survival network.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our free newsletter. Bix, we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good, Carrie. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.